How and why do fireflies light up? Hello and welcome to Knowledge TV Facts. Here, you can watch interesting and informative videos. And if you're new to this channel please hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Fireflies produce a chemical reaction inside their bodies that allows them to light up. This type of light production is called bioluminescence. The method by which fireflies produce light is perhaps the best known example of bioluminescence. When oxygen combines with calcium, adenosine triphosphate ATP, and the chemical luciferin in the presence of luciferase, a bioluminescent enzyme, light is produced. Unlike a light bulb, which produces a lot of heat in addition to light, a firefly's light is, cold light, without a lot of energy being lost as heat. This is necessary because if a firefly's light producing organ got as hot as a light bulb, the firefly would not survive the experience. A firefly controls the beginning and end of the chemical reaction, and thus the start and stop of its light emission, by adding oxygen to the other chemicals needed to produce light. This happens in the insect's light organ. When oxygen is available, the light organ lights up, and when it is not available, the light goes out. Insects do not have lungs, but instead transport oxygen from outside the body to the interior cells within through a complex series of successively smaller tubes known as tracheoles. For a long time it was a mystery as to how some firefly species manage such a high flash rate, considering the relatively slow speed of the muscles that control oxygen transport. Researchers fairly recently learned that nitric oxide gas, the same gas that is produced by taking the drug Viagra, plays a critical role in firefly flash control. In short, when the firefly light is off, no nitric oxide is being produced. In this situation, oxygen that enters the light organ is bound to the surface of the cell's energy-producing organelles, called the mitochondria, and is thereby not available for transport further within the light organ. The presence of nitric oxide, which binds to the mitochondria, allows oxygen to flow into the light organ where it combines with the other chemicals needed to produce the bioluminescent reaction. Because nitric oxide breaks down very quickly, as soon as the chemical is no longer being produced, the oxygen molecules are again trapped by the mitochondria and are not available for the production of light. Fireflies appear to light up for a variety of reasons. The larvae produce short glows and are primarily active at night, even though many species are subterranean or semi-aquatic. Fireflies produce defensive steroids in their bodies that make them unpalatable to predators. Larvae use their glows as warning displays to communicate their distastefulness. As adults, many fireflies have flash patterns unique to their species and use them to identify other members of their species as well as to discriminate between members of the opposite sex. Several studies have shown that female fireflies choose mates depending upon specific male flash pattern characteristics. Higher male flash rates, as well as increased flash intensity, have been shown to be more attractive to females in two different firefly species. The adult fireflies of some species are not luminous at all, however, and instead use pheromones to locate mates. The use of pheromones as sexual signals appears to be the ancestral condition in fireflies with the use of luminous sexual signals as being a more recent development. There are species that employ both pheromonal and luminous components in their mating systems. These species appear to be evolutionarily intermediate between the pheromone-only fireflies and flash-only fireflies. Many fireflies protect themselves from predators with chemicals called lucibophagins. These are molecules the insects synthesize from other chemicals they eat in their diet. Lucibophagins are chemically very similar to the toxins toads exude on their skin, and while they are toxic in the right doses, they are also extremely distasteful. Many photorous fireflies can't manufacture these defensive chemicals. So the females of these big, long-legged lightning bugs do something surprising. Once they've mated, they start mimicking the flashes of female photonists and then eat the males that respond. These femme fatales go on to use the lucibophagins they acquire from ingesting their severely disappointed prey to protect themselves and their eggs from predators. They quickly transfer the chemicals to their blood, and spontaneously bleed if a predator grabs them. Most fireflies are habitat specialists, using woodlands, meadows and marshes. They rely on that habitat remaining undisturbed for the year or more it takes them to complete their life cycles. These insects spend most of their lives as larvae preying on earthworms and other animals in the soil or leaf litter, most adults don't feed at all. 
If that habitat is disrupted during their youth, populations can be extinguished. Adding to this vulnerability is the fact that the females of many species, like the famous blue ghosts of the southern Appalachians and elsewhere, are wingless and can't disperse any further than they can walk. If a population of blue ghosts is destroyed by logging or other disruption, there will be no re-establishment. Habitat destruction is therefore one of the greatest threats to fireflies. Other hazards include light pollution from artificial lights and perhaps insecticide applications for mosquito control. There is much yet to learn about fireflies. Entomologists have identified about 170 or so species in North America, but it is clear that many more species occur here. Pay attention to the fireflies in your neighborhood, observe their flash patterns and behavior. Perhaps you'll discover one of those new species. Thank you so much for your support. And if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button.